Hello students, Mr. Courtney here. In this video, we're going to be looking at naming ionic compounds. We're going to look at the ions formed from metals and the ions formed from nonmetals, how they combine to form a compound, and we're going to and naming those compounds. So let's start with a bit of a refresher. Remember, metals will lose or donate electrons. When they do that, they're going to have more positive charge or more protons than electrons so that gives them a positive charge and these ions we're called they're called cations now if the when the elements lose electrons the charge is increased as we said here so we say that they have been oxidized so when metals lose electrons they are oxidized so here and this 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 picture sums it up all in terms of another casual casualty in the wall of the atoms. Now nonmetals. Nonmetals will gain or accept electrons. When they do that, they have more electrons or more negative charge than protons, which are positively charged. And these are called anions. When the element when an element gains electron, gains an electron, it's gonna lower their charge. To, it's gonna become more negative. So we say that that substance has been reduced. So you need to remember what reduction is and what oxidation is from what we've seen so far. So metals will be oxidized, nonmetals will be reduced. So can it to help you think about cations and anions? You think positively positively about cats and negatively about ants. Now when we form these ions, these positive ions which we call cations, and this negative ions which we call anions, there is an attraction between those, an electrostatic attraction. So that what that's what happens when we form an ionic bond between a metal and a non-metal. So the sodium here is attracted to the bromine or to the chlorine or to fluorine, and when they bond, they form because of that electrostatic attraction, they form a chemical bond, and we call that an ionic bond. Now, it's important that you understand the charge of an ion can be determined from its position on the periodic table. And we looked at this before, so all of this is just a refresher. All the elements in group 1 will have a positive 1 charge, because they have one valence electron, they will lose one electron. Elements in group 2A, two valence electrons, so they can lose two. Group 3A, positive three charge, because they can lose three electrons. In group 4A, these will have a positive, sorry, a negative charge. These will have usually have a positive charge. So they can alternate between positive four and negative four. Those here will gain three electrons, so they will have a negative charge. Here, they will gain two, negative charge, negative two, negative one. These will neither lose nor gain, so they will have a negative charge. Sorry, a charge of zero, not negative charge. So all you're going to do here is basically look at your periodic table based on the position of the elements. You're going to predict their charges. So you can go ahead, pause the video, and then when you finish, you can come back and check your answers. So you should have check, checked your answers and here, here's what they should look like. All right. And remember these charges are based on their position on the periodic table. That determines what charge they'll have based on the number of valence electrons. Alright, so let's look at the, the rules for naming ions. Now the name of the metal ions do not change when they lose electrons. So here we have sodium, we start with sodium with one valence electron and we end up with the sodium ion plus an electron so that tells us that this sodium this electron was lost hence the sodium has a positive charge now look here the charge overall here is zero now when we add our positive and our negative charges on the right side is also equal to zero so they're balanced equal on both sides magnesium two electrons overall charge of zero two valence electrons sorry Magnesium loses two electrons, so it has a charge of positive two. Look at the charges. Plus, we have two electrons, so that's two negative charge, 
and a plus 2, so plus 2 plus negative 2, overall charge is 0. Notice the name of the ion does not change. Sodium, still sodium. Magnesium, still magnesium. Now when we get to the non-metals, the name does change. So here's what we do. Fluorine gains one electron to become the fluoride ion. Sulfur gains two electrons to become the sulfide ion. So look at what we're doing here. We're taking off the INE, or the UR in this case for sulfur, and the INE for fluorine, and we add the suffix IDE. So we keep the root of the element name. Keep the root of the element name and add IDE to it. Okay, so sulfur. Is it a metal or a non-metal? It's a non-metal. So we need to remove the UR and keep and add the IDE as sulfide, as we saw before. Nitrogen is a non-metal. So we remove the OGEN and we get nitride. Potassium is a metal, so it remains the same. So we don't have to change anything. Oxygen, we take off the YGEN and we add IDE, so we get oxide. Lithium, it's a metal, so it stays the same. Bromine, non-metal, take off the INE and we add bro IDE, so we get bromide. Chlorine, same non-metal, take off the INE and we add IDE. Hydrogen, hydrogen could be like a metal, so you can keep it as hydrogen. That's when it's positively charged. Or it can be hydride. And that's when it's negatively charged. So you can gain electrons or you can lose electrons. All right, so polyatomic ions, they are covalently bonded elements that have a charge. So when, if they're covalently bonded, that means we have two or more non-metals bonded together and overall they're going to have a charge. Some of these you will be responsible for memorizing and some of them you will not be and you'll be given a list of those that you need to memorize. Okay so here all you need to do is just look at the list of polyatomic ions available to you and compare the formula to the name. So if you look up SO4-2 you see that is sulfate so that's our name. If I would write sulfate MnO4 minus, that will give you permanganate. And all I'm doing is, all you need to do is look at the list and see the names. Match the formula with the names. OH would be hydroxide. CO3 minus 2, that would be your carbonate. SO3 minus 2. Be careful, it's sulfite. NO3 minus, that gives us your nitrate. So remember, all you're doing is just matching the formula with the name as shown on your polyatomic ion chart. So here now, we're going to be looking at naming the ionic compounds. That is, how do we go from the formula to the name of the compounds? You follow two easy steps, two simple steps. One, you write the name of the metal ion. So we identify the metal ion present here, or the metal in this case, and our metal is calcium. So you write calcium. Secondly, you write the name of the non-metal ion. We have Br, so we know the element is bromine, but to write bromine as an ion, we write B-R-O-M-I-D-E. So remember, we take bromine, and we'll replace the INE with IDE. So that's how we get calcium bromide. And as it said, you're, said you're done. It, it is really that easy. So let's look at some examples. First step, identify the metal present, sodium. So you write that down, sodium. Fluorine. But remember, we don't write the INE. We replace that with 
IDE, so sodium fluoride. All right, number two. The metal present is magnesium. The non-metal present is oxygen. And you look, remember how you wrote the ion for oxygen, O, X, I, D, E, so magnesium oxide. All right, this one here, we have strontium. We have chlorine. And figure out the metal the non-metal ion name for chlorine, which is chloride. Lithium is in this case. L is lithium. Sulfur is called sulfide as the ion. So lithium sulfide. We have calcium and we have oxygen, so that gives us calcium. Remember O X oxygen. We drop the YGEN, so that gives us oxide. K is potassium. And I is for iodine. Drop the INE and IDE, so we get iodide. Now it's important for you to know, be familiar with these various elements and their symbols. It makes it much easier for you and less complicated when you know these elements and their symbols. Okay, now if you have a polyatomic ion, the name of the polyatomic ion is used in the compound. So first of all, you need to identify, do you have a polyatomic ion or not? And all these, we are going to have polyatomic ions. So that means you need to know or be able to find the names of these polyatomic ions. So for example, NH4. Look on your polyatomic ion chart if you do not remember it by now. NH4 is ammonium. So ammonium. And we have fluorine. And the ion of fluorine is called fluoride. So ammonium fluoride. Here we have calcium. SO4 is sulfate. So calcium sulfate. Number three, we have magnesium as the metal. And NO3 minus would be our nitrate, magnesium nitrate. And Na is sodium again. And OH is our hydroxide. So there you have it. Alright, so you can pause the video and go over it, take your time and work on these if you need some more time to do it. So here, you're going to go ahead and name the following ionic compounds. Again, I'm going to go through two examples with you before I leave you to do it on your own. And you can pause the video, come back and look at your answers. So again, non-metal, sorry, the metal is calcium. We have chlorine and the ion name. Okay, let me put it this way. It makes it easier for you. Calcium and chlorine would give us calcium chloride. No, this is all I'm interested in. But I'm just, I just wrote these here to show you how we got to this. Uh, do one more example. We have potassium. Plus sulfur. Remember, you're going to remove the root, the, these. And we get, so we get potassium in this case. Sulfide. So go ahead, pause the video, do the rest, and then come back. And look at the solutions. Okay, so here are the solutions to these problems. Hope you got them. All right, and if you still having difficulty, go back and look over it. Watch over the video. Watch over what we talked about previously. All you need to do, remember, identify the metal and non-metal. In this case here, there's a metal and a polyatomic ion. So you need to be careful once we have polyatomic ions involved. Okay, let's go the opposite way now. Let's go from the name of the compound to the formula of the compound. 
So the first thing you need to do, we have the example magnesium iodide. We know we're going to have magnesium and iodine in it, but we don't know the formula. So we write the symbols down. That's our first step. Then we write the charge of the non-metal and the metal. So we know magnesium, and if you don't remember it, look on the periodic table. has a charge of plus 2. Iodine has a charge of negative 1. And then we're going to determine the formula of the ions. Now, we want to have equal amounts of positive and negative charge to make it neutral. Now, how many iodines would you need to balance the magnesium? You can do it mathematically, or you can do it in a simple way. What we say is using the crisscross method. So we're going to carry the, the, the number, not the sign, just the number. So this is like negative 1 here. So we now have magnesium 1, I, 2. And that's your formula. But we don't write the 1 as a subscript of magnesium. We just write Mg, I, 2. Because if we have two iodides, we have two negative charge, and then we have two positive charge, so they will cancel each other. And that's how we get that. Okay, let's look on with polyatomic ion now. So strontium, look up strontium. All right. Strontium is plus two, nitrate, negative one. Now, you have to be careful. This comes as a group. So we put it in parentheses there. So we have strontium, crisscross. There we go. So we have one strontium. Now, since we need two of the polyatomic ions, it's in a group. So we use parentheses to show that these come together there in one, there as one. And we need two of these. So that's our formula. Let's make that two a little bit better. Again, first step, write the symbol and charge of the metal. Did that. Symbol and charge, write the formula and charge of the polyatomic ion. Did that. Then determine the formula. We use the crisscross method. When we use the crisscross method, we move the numbers, not the sign. Just the numbers, not the sign. Now, look at these. Decide which name goes with each ion. So you can go ahead, pause the video, and then look at them. So nitride, it's going to go here, nitrate, sulfite, sulfide, phosphate, phosphide. So notice, anything that ends with 8 or ITE, they're polyatomic. If it ends with IDE, then it's just an element. The ion name for a nonmetal element. So that's a helpful hint. Alright, so if it ends at IDE, it's probably from the periodic table. And there are a few exceptions. Hydroxide, cyanide, amide, and azide. And usually if it ends in ATE or ITE, it's going to be a polyatomic ion. Now, let's look at the transition metals. Now, in transition metals, remember we said they're a bit different. Because the ions of these elements can have multiple charges. They don't just have one charge. So, for example, iron, Fe, could be iron 2, as we see here. So, the 2 tells us the charge is plus 2. Or if it's 3, it tells us it has a charge of plus 3. So, why are these always positive charges, you may be asked. Or you may be wondering. They're always positive because metals... Because they are metals. Metals always lose electrons. When they lose electrons, they have more protons than electrons. So they're always going to have a positive charge. So, again, the Roman numeral tells us the charge of these ions. So when you see the Roman numeral following the name, that tells us what the charge is. So if we look at this, this example, same thing. Write the symbol and charge of the metal ion using the Roman numeral. So ion 3, Fe, and we know it's plus 3. Oxygen for oxide, negative 2. Notice that the charges are not balanced. Plus 3, negative 2. So what we need to do is crisscross. 
So we bring the 3 to oxygen, the 2 to the bottom of ion as a subscript. So that tells us we need 2 ions, Fe2O3. And I should have shown you this earlier, but think about it. Positive 3 times 2 plus negative 2 times 3. That is 6 minus 6, which gives us an overall charge of 0. And that's what we want to get. Okay, so let's look at these. Potassium iodide, so you're doing the same thing. K plus I minus. So from there we see that the formula will be Ki. Tin 4, so that's Tin SN plus 4 chlorine Cl minus crisscross. So that's SN Cl 4. So at this point, you could go ahead and pause the video and work these out and then come back and look at the solutions. So barium. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2. So plus 2, negative 2. They're the same, so we just keep it as BaSO4 because the charges cancel. Sodium chloride. Sodium is Na plus. Chloride is Cl minus. Equal amounts of positive and negative, so it's a 1 to 1 ratio. Barium chloride, BaCl. Strontium is plus 2. Sulfide is minus 2 equal amounts so strontium sulfide copper 2 so we have copper 2 that tells us the charge is plus 2 carbonate CO3 minus 2 2 positive 2 negative so they stay the same so that's CuCO3 aluminum bromide aluminum plus 3 bromine Minus, so we crisscross the numbers, not the sign, just the numbers. So ALBR3, lithium nitride minus 3, crisscross because they're not equal. So LI3N. And there you have it, naming ionic compounds. We also looked at determining the charge of metal and non-metal ions and writing the formula for compounds also not just naming them but writing the formula so there you have it on that topic until the next time i'm out blessings